Hey everyone, this is Steve with Raybuck Auto Body Parts. Uh, you guys probably recognize the vehicle that's behind me. This is the 53 Chevy pickup that we built uh, a couple years ago. We took it out on the Hot Rod Power Tour this year. It ran wonderfully, uh, but the last day that we were out, we started getting really uh, soft pedal on the brakes. Um, so we were testing it out. If you pumped it a lot, you'd still get a little bit of pressure enough to stop you, but if you really just got on it once, if you really, really just had to stop immediately, it wasn't happening. It kind of scared us a little bit. So uh, we pulled over. We got it up on uh, a curb, really, uh, because that was all that we had to get it up off the ground. Crawled underneath it, found one little leak uh, in one of the fittings in the, um, uh, one of the valves underneath. Tightened that up, got some more fluid in it, and uh, everything seemed to be okay. The ride home was okay brakes seemed a little bit soft but we thought okay maybe there wasn't enough fluid or something else was going on the day after we got it home got in started up the pedal just went all the way to the floor um there was nothing there was no pedal there was no brakes whatsoever so obviously we got it up off the ground got it on blocks uh, up on jack stands started going all over the place uh underneath which looking for leaks uh, couldn't find anything there was no fluid loss anywhere so we are like stumped couldn't figure out what was going on so we thought, okay, well, the only thing left is to look at the master cylinder because that's it. It's a sealed system. So if the fluid's not coming out, it's in there. So what's happening with it? Talked to a bunch of friends, a uh, number of mechanics. They said a lot of times in these master cylinders, uh, the inside piston has a couple of rubber rings. And if one or both of those rings uh, fails or starts to, uh, starts to soften up, uh, the fluid is just going to make a circle. It's going to make a loop inside of it and uh, you'll feel a little bit of pressure on the pedal, not much. Uh, you're not going to see any fluid coming out of the system anywhere because it's just circling inside, mainly just inside the master cylinder. So I just got under there, pulled the master cylinder out, and this is what I found inside of it. Okay, as you can see, this does not look like what it should look like. Those are all kinds of corrosive bubbles that are in the bottom of it. The whole perimeter, this top ring, uh, or the top rim, is just coated with uh, uh, some sort of buildup. Uh, looks like rust. It wipes right off or scrapes right off with a screwdriver and comes off. Uh, but there's something obviously going on with the cast that's in this uh, master cylinder. Uh, again, you can see down in the bottom, if I could uh, try to get the light down in there. There's one of the, the holes where the fluid flows down through. Um, here's another one where it recirculates down through. But I mean, look at, look at that. I mean, that's, it's pretty disgusting. And this hasn't even been on there that long. This has only been on the truck for two years or so. Um, but obviously, there's something going on, like I said, with this. Um, so again, the way the system works, if you're not familiar with uh, with these systems. So you have, we have a power booster on this because we have power brakes, um, but if you didn't have power brakes, you would just have the master cylinder. The master cylinder on the power system just connects right up to the power booster. So when you push down on the pedal, uh, it pushes on the back end on a lever. That The lever goes into this little pin. As you can see, there's like a little indentation right here. Um, this pin then goes into the side of the master cylinder. I'll lift it up so you can see what that looks like. It just goes right down in there and then way down in there, you can see it, that's the end of the rod that's in there that I was telling you that the uh, those rubber rings, those O-rings are around. So that just pushes, uh, it slides back and forth and that's what pushes the uh, the pressure or puts the pressure on the uh, the fluid to get the fluid flowing out into the uh, lines. It doesn't even really move that much. It's just enough that it puts pressure on it, and uh, and that's what pushes on the uh, calipers up on the front and on the back for the uh, discs that we have on here that uh, that will stop the brakes. So apparently, like I said, this whole unit is trashed. Um, we're not even going to try to rebuild it. We're just going to get a better one. Unfortunately, this is something that we uh, put on towards the. Uh, uh, towards the end of the build and probably should have spent a little bit more money and got a nicer system, maybe a Willwood or something like that, um, CPP or one of the other ones that are out there. So uh, we'll be replacing this unit and I can just about guarantee as soon as the new one's on, we get uh, the brakes bled 
everything will be back to normal the way that it was and we'll have brakes. So again, if you've got no pedal and you have no leaks anywhere in your system, definitely take a look at your master cylinder, pop it off, take a look in there, drain it, see if it looks like this. Hopefully it does not. Um, and if, even if it doesn't look like this, there's a really good chance that those rubber seals that are down underneath of this that are connected to that rod um, or that piston that goes through there um, might be leaking and just letting the fluid recirculate within the system. So uh, you can always take it off and, and uh, do a bench test. Um, they have little bench kits that you can put on these to see if the fluid circulating around or staying inside of the cylinders or in the, the, uh, the cavities here. Um, either way, I would just take it off and replace it. It's a cheap fix um, for something that is super important, obviously, for, uh, for your vehicle. Okay, so I got my new master cylinder. Uh, I did get the aluminum one uh, that I was thinking would be a good fit. I uh, got it from Classic Performance Products. Right here, these guys have a ton of cool stuff. Uh, website isn't the greatest, so it might be easier just to give them a call. Um, this was, I think, their uh, Corvette style. Nothing real fancy. This wasn't the, the smooth one or whatever. I mean, it is smooth, but it's not what they consider the smooth one. Um, but it is the aluminum one. It has the chrome cap. Um, they had one with a black cap, but I wanted the one that had the ports on both sides. Unfortunately, the chrome cap was the only one that came with this one. Um, but uh, this one, it did have the ports on both sides, and what was nice, it actually came with the plugs. It came with two sets of plugs, so you got them for both sides. I'm not sure why they give you two sets, because obviously you need one side to at least connect the brake lines to. But anyway, they did give you that. The one thing they don't give you, though, which would have been nice instead of the extra set of plugs, is fittings. So standard uh, 3 16 I think it was, the fitting that we have on the truck for that line just looks like this. Unfortunately, the, the uh, ports that come on this are a, uh, a half or a 9 16 20 and a half 20 so I just ran down to the local uh, Napa and got those um, so you can get adapters if you want I was making two new lines um, we have residual valves going in each direction they're only 12 to 18 inches away from the master cylinder so instead of putting uh, an adapter in and then connecting the line to it um, there's a pretty tight bend between the uh, 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 frame rail and the uh, the master cylinder I just figured I would just make two new lines just cut those uh, fittings off the other ones that reuse them make two new lines and then use uh, these fittings obviously the fittings that go into the residual valves I could reuse but um, I'm just going to use these fittings to go into the, the new master cylinder on the other side um, if you forgot from a few seconds ago what the old one looked like the old crusty inside uh, the cast iron one, that's what it looked like. Here's the fluid, the wonderful brown, looks like used motor oil almost fluid that came out with the uh, residue in the bottom. Uh, this one, I did the uh, uh, bench bleed on it, and this kit actually came with a uh, bench bleed kit. Apparently their master cylinders come with one. I had one, but it was cool that they sent you one because um, a lot of people don't realize when they're getting a new master cylinder, you have to bench bleed it, um, and this kit came with it. Real simple, just a couple plastic fittings. That's what you actually see here and here. This is one of the, the lines that came with it. Um, the rest of it's over on the bench. Um, but it, simple enough, uh, bled in you know 30 seconds or a minute or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, there you go. That's what the fluid should look like. So did the bench bleed, just stuck the fluid, left the fluid in it, because I'm going to go put it under the truck here in a minute. But at least I want to show you guys that versus that. A little bit of a difference. And then the other side of the uh, master cylinder, right now I just have the plugs that came in it so that I can put it under the vehicle, put it under the truck, Oop, dropped one of the fittings, and uh, we'll get this thing hooked up. I'm pretty sure this is going to fix our problem. And another nice little benefit, I wasn't even thinking about it, but after uh, lifting it above my head under the truck, I realized, wow, this thing is pretty darn light. Yeah, this old cast iron master cylinder, I can't even say old because it was a new one, but the one that was in there that's cast weighs almost 10 pounds. Um, this new one weighs about a pound. It's like about a pound, pound and a half, somewhere like that. So if you're looking for another small area for uh, some weight savings, for whatever reason, get the aluminum master cylinder. So not only do you have to not worry about this uh, issue that we ran into here, which again seemed like a freak issue, but maybe it comes up more often than I think, but you get the weight savings. So that was pretty nice too. Um, and it's aluminum, so you're not going to have to worry about it uh, rusting and, uh, you know, deteriorating from the elements because it is underneath the truck or at least ours is it's under the floor so um yeah so that's it i'm gonna go get this thing mounted it uh the holes fit right up it came with the uh uh the pin in the front the slide pin uh the spacer whatever they call it so everything is exactly the way that it was um literally just have to bolt it up i'm going to make these two new lines with the new fittings 
and uh, get it connected up and bleed it and finally get this thing back on the road. Okay, I was just getting ready to make the two brake lines that I was talking about, and I thought, you know, I should just show what I'm doing um, because some of you might be interested. I used to make all these lines by hand, the brake lines, transmission lines, uh, cut them and then flare them by hand, which is a real pain in the ass. Um, and as you know, if you've ever done it, it works out about half the time. Uh, sometimes you get a really good fitting or a good flare on the end of that uh, the line, and sometimes you don't. Um, this tool, this brake line flaring tool, is unbelievable. I got a kit from Eastwood. Um, it's real nice. I know there are other kits that are out there. I just happened to pick this one up. Comes with some different dies for different size lines. So if you're doing, you know, three sixteenths, five sixteenths, quarter, three eighths, whatever, it comes with all of those. Um, and it is it is super super easy to use. So um, you get the uh, uh, the piece that you need for the size line that you uh, that you're working on. Put it in the uh, top portion of the device here. Obviously, I have the whole thing mounted in a vise. You just clamp it in there. Got the line coming in the back. There's a, uh, on the, this round die head, there's a flat piece. You literally just go like that, give it a little tug so that it puts the, uh, the pipe right where it needs to be or the tube where it needs to be. Tighten down the top clamp, which I already did at the top lever, which I already did. And then from there, you pick your OP1 and your OP2. So OP1 um, is just for the size line that, uh, that we're working on. So I have 3 16 line, so I took OP1 3 16 get it lined up, and then literally, I could do this with one hand. Um, you pull the, the lever that's right here. See if I can get in there. You give it a little tug. There's that. And then I'm going to do the OP2, which is going to be the second part of the bubble flare. So we got OP2 in there. You can already see that the flare is starting. So you can see it was all the way out. It was flush, and now it's pushed in and starting to flare. I'm going to give it a little tug. Boom. Done. Now watch. I'm going to take this out of here. And there it is. Like, it's unbelievable. Literally, let's see if I can get a, a better focus on it. Literally, like, every time I've done this, it's that easy and it's that fast. Like, it is crazy. Like, it's almost actually fun making brake lines and transmission lines. Now, I never thought I would say that. It sounds kind of stupid, but... It's really, really cool. So if you're doing more than you know one or two lines, or if you do project cars or whatever, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting one of these. I'm kicking myself for not getting one years ago. It's just unbelievable. It saves so much time and aggravation, and you know you're going to get a good flare every time. So after you do all your crazy bends and get everything lined up, you put it in. You don't have to worry about it leaking. It just goes in, and it seals, and it's perfect. So I would definitely get one of these kits. Okay, so I got the new master cylinder in place and uh, got the new lines in place that I was just showing you about uh, right before this. Everything's hooked up and uh, bled the brakes on it. Everything's looking good. So I was thinking uh, before I wrap this thing up, I'll show you guys a little trick I have. I'm sure a lot of you know about this, but if you don't, it's very handy for when you're uh, manually bleeding brakes. So as you can see, I got my wrench in place on the bleeder, but Typically, obviously, if, if you've done this before, you know, as soon as you hit that bleeder, brake fluid's going to shoot out. It's going to go everywhere. So what I do is I get a little water bottle. It could be anything, uh, any type of bottle like this, just like a little 12-ounce bottle. And I got a rubber hose, and all I did was poke a hole in the top and put the hose in it. And then you could just put this rubber hose right over top of your bleeder like that. And then just let the, the bottle hang, the hose hang. And then as you're bleeding, it just captures the fluid. So the brake fluid just comes out. It's real nice too because then you can see if there's even just a little bit of air coming out. You'll see the air bubbles come right up uh, through the tube uh, and it captures everything that, that flows out. Um, you could, I guess, recycle that fluid if it was clean and if you wanted to reuse it. Um, there's typically not a whole lot that's coming out. The stuff that was coming out of here was pretty dirty because I wanted to flush everything out of the line. So I did this on each of the wheels and uh, got all of the old fluid out and then all the air out and we're good to go. So I tested it, like I said, just bled it and uh, fired the thing up and it has brakes again, which is fantastic. We can finally get this back out of the garage. But uh, there's a little tip for uh, bleeding the brakes by hand and without uh, any of the other tools. Okay.